In this video, I'm going to go over decision trees and how to implement this in Worker. Now, decision trees are often referred to as CART, which stands for classification and regression trees, um, are a type of algorithm used in machine learning for both classification and regression analysis. Um, as you can see here, um, it kind of just uses graphical representation of all the possible outcomes of a series of decisions based on certain uh, conditions. Uh, with each decision here and condition represented as a node and a branch, respectively. So let's look at this example here. Um, at the top here, uh, we have the root node, right? In our case here, age is less than 30. Right. So this represents the initial condition starting point. Right. And the branches here, these are the branches, right? Or the sub branch uh, represent the different possible decisions that can be made based on this condition. Right. If age is less than 30, then yes, okay, or no. Right. And if this individual uh, also eats pizza, um, we make a final decision. Right. If yes, then this individual is unfit. Okay. We refer to this as the leaf node, right? So this is our leaf node. This is the final outcome of the final uh, decision that is reached, right? If this individual doesn't eat pizza and is uh, age less than 30, then uh, this individual is actually fit, okay? Similarly here, if this individual uh, is greater than 30 in terms of age um, and does um, exercise, right? Then uh, this individual is actually fit as a final decision otherwise unfit, okay? Now, uh, decision trees here um, can be used to analyze and solve problems that are often found in finance, right? You know, healthcare and, and, and marketing, right? Um, again here, the future outcomes, right? Or predictions or decisions are based on current, uh, current data, okay? Um, again, also it's worth noting that um, in ensemble methods, we can also use what we call random forests, uh, which is just an extension of decision trees where just use the, the, uh, the idea of wisdom of trees where we select um, random trees, could be 10, 100, um, maybe 1,000, and, and we also randomly split the uh, text subsets of the data, right? This helps it improving the effectiveness and uh, accuracy of our model, okay? Also, again, uh, another thing to note here is that decision trees um, recursively works by partitioning the data. So you can see into smaller uh, sub branch. So we call this a sub, actually, this is actually a sub branch, a sub branch, right? Okay. So smaller subset based on the values of the input features. Okay. Some of the cr criteria that we use to make those decisions uh, are information gain and Gini index, right? So, um, so the information gain here, um, uh, again, probably here the goal is to create a decision tree that accurately predicts the target variable, right? In our case, the target var variable here is whether this person is fit or unfit, right? Um, again, this can be based on selecting features and perhaps thresholds that best separate the data into different classes, okay? Now, information gain here simply means uh, a measure of how well the feature separates the different classes or outcome, okay? So this is a, a criteria that is very important, um, you know, in decision trees, right? But before I just talk more a little bit about that, uh, again, when building a decision tree, you know, it's important to um, uh, look at the following phases. We have the induction phase, right? So the first phase here is induction. Simply what that means is that we just build the tree recursively by splitting it into uh, smaller subsets, like, like in this example, okay? And uh, based on the most information gain, uh, based on the feature that is selected, okay? So we continue this process until the alg algorithm reaches a stop stopping criteria, okay? This criteria could be maybe the minimum number of samples which you have to specify, right? Or Again, here you can uh, maybe you reach the maximum depth of this tree. Okay, how many levels do we need to go down? Okay, okay. Then the next phase here is actually pruning. So pruning is a very important uh, parameter or feature. You know, when creating a decision tree, simply what that means is that the algorithm will just remove branch or nodes that don't improve the performance of a tree. 
So pruning here again helps with mitigating the phenomena of uh, overfitting. Okay, we just want to prevent overfitting. Okay, where the model is too complex and performs very well on the training data. Oftentimes, this will lead to uh, poorly or uh, generalization of new data. Okay. So uh, again, here, uh, information gain um, is just a measure of the reduction in entropy achieved by partitioning the data based on a particular feature. Okay. So entropy here essentially just means the, um, the measure of impurity, the disorder, the chaos in your data set. Okay. So uh, again, when selecting the best feature to split the data, the algorithm just computes this information gain, you know, what we call as IG, okay? Um, again, you know, so the information gain for each feature essentially is just the, uh, the entropy of the, uh, the difference between the entropy of the parent node and the weighted average entropies of the child nodes, okay? So again, the, the feature with the highest information gain is selected with the splitting feature. Uh, when we look at Gini index, is another criterion that helps us to select which features to start with. Uh, again, here is just an, another measure of impurity or heterogeneity of your data set, right? This just represents the uh, probability, okay? Gini index represents the probability of misclassifying a randomly chosen element from the set, okay? Again, if it's labeled according to the distribution of the classes in your set, in our case here, and fit or fit, okay? So here it's worth noting that it ranges from zero to one. What that means is zero indicates perfect purity and one indicates maximum uh, impurity, okay? So it doesn't really matter here. So again, both information gain and Gini index are just used to evaluate the quality of a split, okay? Um, in a decision tree. So the choice of which one to use actually depends on the specific problem and the characteristics of your data, okay? So uh, in summary here, uh, this is just a high level uh, overview of decision tree. Decision tree works by recursively partitioning the data, as we have seen here in a hierarchical manner, uh, the data based on the most informative features based on this criteria, information gain and Gini index. Actually, in another video, um, I'll just go over different examples of how to calculate that. Um, again, it has some equations you need to calculate, okay? So with the goal of creating a tree that accurately predicts the target variable. And as you can see, you know, using uh, the decision tree might be easier to interpret, okay? So with that, let's look at the implementation in Worker. Just gonna uh, maximize this. So again, we're just gonna click on the choose button here. Uh, from the selection here, we select, we go to trees here, we're gonna select this last option here, okay? As you can see, that's a fast, uh, fast decision tree learning. So select that, uh, click on the name of the tree to view the algorithm configuration. And we can look at uh, some parameters here, okay? So the depth of the tree is defined automatically, but we can specify that by using this attribute here, max depth. Uh, where is this? So here just allows us to, you know, uh, specify how much uh, depth we want to go, right? Uh, okay, so uh, we can also choose to turn off the pruning set. Remember, we just talked about pruning. So whether we want to do pruning, this is important. If you have a large data set, I'm just going to leave the default, okay? Um, this, this sometimes if put true might probably result into uh, worse performance, right? And then the next parameter that's very important here to keep in mind is the minimum number. Uh, this just defines the number of instances supported by the tree, okay, in a leaf node, okay, especially when you're constructing or creating the tree from the training data. So we're gonna leave the default uh, configuration, click OK, then click on Start, okay. So from here, we can already see that the root mean squared um, is 4.8, which performs uh, slightly better or actually slightly worse compared to uh, linear, uh, actually performs much better than linear regression, okay? So with that, uh, in our next video, we're gonna look at support vector regression.